You already know that I love cacao pods. They can be used to make such a wide range of things, way beyond chocolate. The seeds have a really fruity flesh, somewhat like lemonade, somewhat like a Jolly Rancher. It's really hard to explain. Then of course, inside are the actual seeds. And those seeds are what are used to ultimately make chocolate. But how can we take that further? How can we go past that and make cooler things, make new things out of it? Well, if you've been watching this series, you already know that we've made a bunch of different things out of cacao pods. We've made lava cakes and brownies, and I guess quite a few baked goods. But today I wanna go a little bit further than that and head from sweet to savory. We are gonna use these cacao pods to make a Mexican mole sauce. Now I'll be honest, I've never made mole. I actually learned a lot about it in a class during college and I'm sure I've had it once or twice, but it seems like such an incredible, well-developed and really well-flavored sauce. So I'm gonna see if I can use local ingredients that I have access to to make as close as I can get to a traditional mole. Let's roll. Now, I know some people still really want that knife throw. So here it is. This is today's knife throw. I don't actually have that many knife throw bloopers because I don't mess them up too often, but let me try that again. Now let's start with our chicken. Traditionally, really soft, slow cooked chicken is the carrier for a mole sauce. So I'm gonna try to do that in a fairly traditional way. We'll start with our whole chicken. We don't have to butcher it or anything. I'll definitely show how to do that in a separate video, but for now, this is easy. It's only three ingredients, and then this is off and cooking. You'll notice I have a small cutting board on top of my typical cutting board, which is something I always do when using any raw ingredients or anything like onions, garlic, stuff that'll contaminate or make my main cutting board smell bad. Then I just toss this in the dishwasher at the end. It's actually a really great kitchen hack. I'm actually excited because this is a really plump chicken. But before I put it in the pot, I'm first gonna dress this chicken with some butter. It's my little trick that I always do whether I'm roasting or just normally cooking a chicken, and it gives that really good rich buttery flavor. You simply just have to lift up that skin and fit your hand all the way back through there. It's actually way easier than it looks to make that separation between the flesh and the skin. Then, simply take your butter and start working that back towards the end of the chicken. Those cubes of butter will sit between the flesh and the skin and slowly melt as the chicken begins to cook. And now our chicken is ready to cook. Once our chicken's butter up, I'm gonna open up my pot that's got a little bit of water in there. Then I'll rest my chicken breast side down right in this pot. Looks like I measured that water level perfectly. I'll add in a few hunks of rough chopped onion, which will just give a little bit of flavor to that chicken, as well as a nice generous sprinkle of salt. After that, we'll cover up the pot and this will slow cook in the oven at about 300 Fahrenheit until the chicken is fall apart tender. If you've heard of mole, you probably know that it has chocolate in it. That's what makes it such a unique sauce. As you know, with our cacao series, we we pretty much always turn this cacao pod into nibs before we make our final dish. So let's do exactly that. You already know I've got to do my karate chop. I've been practicing. I'm aiming for just one chop to open the whole thing up. Here we go. Ah! That was a bit too aggressive of a karate chop because as you can see, the inside's been all broken into when I did that. But the important thing is we got it open. Before I empty these into a bowl, I'll move this to the side and do my next one. I'm actually really curious to see if I can do a left hand chop. This time, a much cleaner cut. And as you can see inside, our beautiful cacao fruit covering those seeds. I couldn't karate chop that last one. My hands started to get really messed up from doing this so much. But now that we've got these all broken open, let's empty them into our bowl. People always love to hear that gooey stickiness of these. And I'll always be the first to admit that it's crazy that chocolate comes from this. Once I've finished emptying all of these into my bowl, I'm gonna cover these up and let them ferment for about a week. Once these have fermented, I'll spread them out on my tray, really getting them nice and even, and I'll roast these in the oven until they're golden brown and crumbly. Once they've roasted, they'll be nice and hard and crumbly. And now we can take some of these seeds individually, crush them under our hand, and we'll get cacao nibs. As I often say, you might recognize these from the top of a smoothie bowl or something like that, but these are what would be essentially ground into chocolate. But with some added sugar, and maybe milk powder. These are what are ground into chocolate bars. And once I've separated out all my nibs, I'll pour about five ounces into my spice grinder. Alternatively, I can just take a knife and chop these up. And if you're making this mole recipe, you'll just take regular dark chocolate and either pulse it down a little bit in a food processor or chop it up with a knife. I'm just gonna pulse this a couple times to break it down a little bit more. Now, once we've ground our chocolate into a finer powder, we'll pour this into our bowl to save for our mole sauce, as this comes towards the end of our recipe. But I thought it was important to get this ingredient ready before we actually got to that step. Traditionally, mole will have guajillo, ancho, and chipotle chiles. Today, I've pretty much gotten everything I can get around here. And I think the important part is that I have the dried guajillo chiles here. I'll be honest, I'm not the best when it comes to eating spicy foods, but I'm trying to get better. And it's actually really cool having new things in my kitchen like this. One thing I do love about these chiles is that that you can still hear those seeds rattling around on the inside, almost like a rattlesnake. 
To start, I'm gonna prepare all my chiles by simply taking off the heads and removing all those seeds on the inside. I'm too much of a baby. I simply can't handle any of those seeds. But if you dare, I imagine you could leave all the seeds in and make a pretty mean mole. Once I've taken off all the heads of my peppers, I'll take a spoon and dig out all the seeds. I can tell that some of these peppers are really spicy because even the juices that are spraying off of some of them are burning my fingers. I'm sure a lot of people will laugh looking at some of the peppers I have about how much of a baby I really am with spice. But other than the occasional spicy food from my aunt, who's Indian and therefore cooks a lot of the cuisine, I never really grew up with a lot of spicy food. Now we're ready to toast off our chiles. In a completely dry pan, we're gonna toast off some of our chiles. I'll fire up the heat and first toss in my dry guajillo chiles. As you can see, I've cut off the tops and seeded these. I think they just might kill me if I didn't do that. Now I just wanna let that get nice and warm and a little bit aromatic. Really make sure here that they don't burn because apparently they can get quite bitter. Now once these get really aromatic, and by the way, I'll say that they smell fantastic, I'll add in some of my other chiles to toast those a bit as well. Now I've mixed and matched the amount of my peppers in here, but to follow along with this recipe, you'll want two dried guajillo chiles, two dried ancho chiles, and three dried chipotle chiles. Again, I've gone with a nice colorful mix that'll hopefully give me a bit more of a tame mole sauce. Now, once these get nice and hot, I'm gonna add in about two cups of chicken broth. This chicken broth will soak up some of that flavor and then this will all go into the blender to start the base of what we're gonna blend into the mole. Once our chicken broth has gotten nice and warm, we'll add all the contents into a blender. This chicken broth has turned a really nice rich color, which is a great sign. We've got a ton of flavor in there. Save this pan, because we're gonna continue toasting other ingredients now. What I like about mole is that it allows you to use a lot of leftover ingredients, things that might go bad in your fridge. So here, I'll use up a few corn tortillas that I had left over from taco night, as well as an old brioche dinner roll. I'm gonna stack these tortillas together and cut them into a bunch of nice strips. I'll move these off to the side and same thing with my dinner roll. Now these are ready to toast. In the same dry pan, we'll toast off our strips and our dinner roll until they're slightly golden brown. Make sure you are moving these around quite a bit because things can burn really easily, especially if there's no oil at the bottom of the pan. And when I say you're nice and brown, I really mean get it nice and toasted. If you smell a little bit of that burning flavor, that's okay. We're gonna remove this from the heat and again, add this to our blender to let these soak. I have you unique twist I want to put on this mole. Because we're doing this from fresh cacao pods, I've poured some chicken stock over some of my leftover cacao seeds that still have that flesh on there. I want to let that sit for just a second to really get some of that fruity cacao flavor out of there. And then because this has to soak for a little while, I'll pour this into a strainer right over the top and get out as much of that juice as I can possibly get. This is where that creativity in food can really come in handy. And to me, while it's clearly a really important traditional recipe, mole seems like a recipe that was created not to waste anything. Thing, which is exactly why I want to use these here. Now again, once we see that bread begin to get nice and soggy and we've added about a cup of additional chicken stock, I'll pour this into my blender as well. At this point, there's so much flavor in here. And with everything pushed down and fully submerged, we want to let this sit for about 10 minutes until we blend it. I'll place on my lid and blend this until smooth. I can't even begin to describe some of the smells that are already coming out of here. The corn tortillas definitely stand out and coupled with that is this amazing combination of peppers. I'm so excited to add the rest of our ingredients. For now, let's move this aside. Now in the spirit of really using up all of our leftovers, I have some tomato sauce that's gonna go bad if I don't use it up. So I'll use this instead of a few tomatoes here. If you're using tomatoes, use two tomatoes here to really make sure that tomato flavor still gets in there. I'm gonna use just a little bit of tomato paste as well. Now, here I have six tomatillos. Some people have never seen or heard of these before, but they're actually really cool. Once I peel back that skin on the outside, almost like an onion, but easier to peel, I'm left with what's basically a green tomato. You've probably had tomatillo salsa before, which is absolutely delicious, but we're gonna use them here for our mole. Let's start by peeling off each of the six of our tomatillos. I like leaving them with their little hats on. They almost look like a bunch of little minions. Now, even though they all look really cute and I don't want to, I'm gonna chop all their heads off one by one and then cut each of them in half. Again we're gonna toast these off a little bit in the dry pan to get some flavor. In our dry pan, I'll add all the tomatillo halves and then crank up the heat. Shake these around a little bit to really give them some color. You should start to see a little bit of browning on your tomatillos. At which point I'll add in my tomato paste, stir that around for just a second here to get that coated over the tomatillos, and then follow that with my tomato sauce. Once this whole mixture is nice and warm, we can combine this with the rest of the contents in our blender. I'll gently pour these contents into my blender, trying not to let it splash up at all. And then again, I'll blend it up. Back in my pan, we're really getting a lot of use out of this pan today. I'll toss in a tablespoon of lard. Butter's also fine. I'm gonna let this melt down for just a second here. This is my favorite part because this is where you smell 
all the aromatics, all the herbs. This is that thing that fills up your whole kitchen with those amazing scents that we all know and love when it comes to food and cooking. Once that lard has browned a little bit, we'll toss in a whole chopped onion and just let that go for a minute until it's nice and aromatic. Then I'll toss in a third a cup of chopped peanuts. I guess I didn't really chop them, but they'll get blended anyway. Then a quarter cup of raisins, two tablespoons of cumin seeds, one tablespoon of dried thyme, three cinnamon sticks, five whole cloves, six whole allspice berries, Whew! and that's it. Well, not it for all the ingredients in this recipe, but that's it for this run. I almost got out of breath saying all of those things. We'll cook and stir this for about five to eight minutes until the onions have softened just a bit and everything smells delicious. Once this is all set, we'll pick out all the whole spices, namely the cinnamon, allspice berries, and whole cloves, if I can even find them. And then one last time, we blend it up. Now, once we've finally picked out everything from this pan, I'll put this all right into my blender. I promise everybody, this is the last time that we have to blend today. This just goes to show you the complexity of this recipe. All those amazing ingredients that go in and get incorporated almost one at a time. It's just incredible. I'll place the lid on my blender one last time and blend this up. Now finally, we'll pour in our mole to this large pan here. Look at how velvety and amazing that looks. We got that nice blend on it and I'm so excited to finish this out. Once that's in our pan, we'll turn up the heat a little bit and then I'll sprinkle in my five ounces of chocolate, which are gonna melt into and beautifully incorporate into the sauce to finish it up. Then I'll sprinkle in about three tablespoons of white sugar just to sweeten it up a little bit. Just a tad more chicken broth if we need to thin it out at all. And then I'll finish it out with just a tiny pinch of salt. To allow that chocolate to melt in, I'll whisk this slowly until my sauce gets that rich brownish flavor that we look for in a mole. Looking down at this simple looking sauce, it's amazing to think about how much work went into getting here. As I'm stirring, I'm starting to get some of those chocolatey notes and the color changes to that perfect mole color. If you can't tell, I'm really excited to try this. Once you've reached the proper consistency that'll coat your chicken, rice, whatever you're enjoying this with well, you can remove this from the heat and get ready to eat. And now for our chicken. It's been cooking in there for several hours and should fall right off the bone when I open it up. I can see that we even got a little bit of browning on top of the skin from those butter cubes that were inside here. The onions are soft and almost look like they're confit, and the meat comes right off like it's nothing. It's so tender that it's actually even hard for me to pick up any of it. And look how juicy it is. You just can't get chicken meat that's juicier than that. To plate my dish, I'll take a really hot piece of my chicken, and then another because I really want to be able to get a lot of that sauce. And then I'll take a few really nice big spoonfuls of my mole and pour that all over that chicken. I really wanna drench this thing in sauce because we worked so hard to get these flavors. So now I wanna taste them. Then just to finish this off and remember where all of this came from, I wanna give it a nice little sprinkle of cacao nibs. Cause in addition to some flavor, that'll give it a really nice texture. And that right there is my mole from a cacao pod. Let's say we give it a try. Again, I just wanna show you how insanely good this looks. I love that addition of cacao nibs onto the top of this. But first, I feel that it's only right if I taste this mole sauce with nothing else. So here we go. That is fantastic. It's like nothing I've ever had before in my entire life. I think I've had mole, but even this just blows my mind. What I think is the craziest about this sauce is that I can taste everything in it. It's so rich, complex. The depth in this sauce is mind blowing. I can taste those tortillas. I can taste the peppers. I taste those raisins with that sugar a little bit. Even the finely ground peanuts give me that light creamy nuttiness at the end of my bite. And of course that chocolate comes through like no other, but in the most subtle, amazing way you can imagine. That is something special. But let's quickly get a nice bite from our chicken. I hope you can see how easily this chicken peels right off. In fact, it's so incredibly delicate that it just falls right off my face fork all the time. Now let me take a bite. Oh my gosh, that is insane. Truly everyone, I honestly, honestly don't know how to describe this. It's what I think of when I think of good food. A mole sauce might not be the prettiest thing out there, but it really doesn't matter. The flavors in here, they stand out. They're bold, they're amazing, they're delicious. And to those of you that call this your home cuisine, I've tried to keep it as traditional but accessible as possible here. I know I didn't have all the right chiles, and I absolutely welcome any criticism or comments that you might have about how I could do this better. But honestly, as someone trying to make this for the first time ever, this is fantastic, and I couldn't be happier. Now, we really do have some crazy videos coming up, and I don't want you to miss them. We've been planning so hard as a team behind the scenes to make some really cool stuff, and I have all sorts of wild ingredients behind me in my kitchen right now. I'll keep them a secret for now, but make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss those. In the meantime, I'd appreciate a like on the video and comment to let me know how you liked it, whether or not you're gonna make it, or maybe you just love that spank on the chicken. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.